I'm Denise, and this is my reading wrap-up from books I've read and recommend from January. Whether you're sitting around a pool on a tropical vacation trying to escape the winter snow, or you're sitting by a cozy fire with a cup of hot cocoa, with maybe a splash of mmm in it, you know, to raise it up to the next level, well then you're my kind of gal. <laughs> And I've got some great new recommended book releases for you, as well as a few that I am really glad I moved to the top of my backlist pile. So stay tuned as we take a look at the 10 books, whoops, 10 books I read in January in 10 minutes. Oh, don't start timing me yet though, okay? <gasps> Welcome to ThisIsMyEverybody.com, or T-I-M-E for short, time. <laughs> now here I'm focused on always finding that amazing book that's filled with wonderful settings, characters, and experiences that will inspire us to create simple, beautiful, and meaningful DIY home ideas, fashion tips, food, and more, more, and more, all to support you in helping to bring your favorite book to life in your life and home. Now if this is something that sounds good to you, then make sure that you subscribe to my channel. And also tap the bell so that you'll be notified when my next video is ready to go. <laughs> so, are you ready to go? Let's get to the good stuff. Okay, today we're talking about the 10 books I read in January in 10 minutes. Don't start the timer yet. <laughs> I know I keep like teasing you with this. But before we dive into each book, I want to give you, I want to just sort of set the scene for how all these 10 books really added up. Out of the 10 books, six were brand new January releases. That's going to be sort of my thing this year. That's going to be my priority to make sure I'm trying to get through those new release lists that people are giving me to review. Yeah, of course, I'm always going to get to that back list. Mm -mm. But <laughs> that's going to be my uh, priority is going to do the new releases. You may be asking yourself, what's a backlist pile? Well, I'm telling you, it's not the junk in the trunk. It is that stack of books that just keeps getting higher and higher and higher of all these wonderful books that you're meaning to get to, but other things seem to get in the way, whether it's additional new books or just life or whatever. But you need to give attention to that backlist pile every once in a while. There's some great titles hiding in there. So that's what your backlist pile is. You're not sitting on it. Well, you, you sort of are. Yeah. Okay. Are we straight on that yet? Great. Okay, moving into the genres. We have one that was a romance, one that was a spicy romance. More on that later. Uh, we have one that I'm really not sure what category it is. We have three that were thrillers that really got my heart pumping. We have one that was a memoir, which I absolutely loved. More on that later. And then we have two that were just flat out great fiction stories that I was completely invested in and loved. We had one that's a great home decor idea book that's going to live on my bedside table forever, inspiring me in my dreams. And then we have one that's uh, this book two in a series that I've been reading. So, that's the initial breakdown. Let's move to the next category. Okay, let's move into character types. And I am so thrilled to say that all 10 books have a strong female character. I mean, that's my jam. That's just got to be there. And you may ask yourself, how can a home decor book have a strong female character? Well, I'll get to that. Mm -hmm. And I'm even more excited to tell you that two of the books have my very special favorite character, which is that young girl on the rise that you know this girl is going places. She could be president. And two of the books in this have that. Oh my, so good. Other books that um, have had characters like this that I just really love, The Young Girl on the Rise, is Kaya in Where the Crawdads Sing, um, Emmy, Little Emmy in This Tender Land, and then we've got two more that join that club. Two Young Girls on the Rise. I wonder if I would have been a young girl on the rise. Mm, I doubt it. I learned later. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's get into settings and time periods or timelines. Uh, out of the 10 in settings, eight of them have very unique settings or experiences that the story is based against. Uh, eight unique settings. Yeah, 
pretty amazing. And then out of the 10 in timelines, we have all, every single one of them, all 10 of them have at least one foot in the contemporary timeline as well. Whereas one, four of them have four, multiple timelines going on. Either the story is told in a dual timeline back and forth, or like for instance, in the memoir where you're in three different timelines of the grandmother, or the a mother, or the daughter, that kind of thing. And for those who really like numbers, let's talk length of each book. The shortest I read was 112 pages, longest 420. The average number of pages per book was approximately 324, meaning that in January I read a total of 3,248 pages. Mm -hmm. Still with me? <laughs> Great. Well, three of them I read in one day, Five I considered could not put this book down category, and eight of them I kept thinking this would be a great book to turn into a movie or a television series. Mm -hmm. And now for the final two categories, two of the books are, in my opinion, wonderful book club selections, and three of the books get my personal seal of approval as time favorites. Oh, now the part I'm so excited about. I've set the scene, we've got the lay of the land, and we're ready to do 10 books in 10 minutes. So get your timers ready and go! Book number one, would like to meet Rachel Winters. New release, basically what's happening here is that the main female lead had received a challenge from someone who doesn't believe that what happens in romantic comedy movies could actually happen in real life. So she accepts the challenge and she starts to set up all these scenarios of how she could meet someone based upon how people meet each other in a romantic comedy movie. And of course, because of this, this book would make a great movie in and of itself. Uh, it also has one of those great young girl on the rise characters I was talking about. A one wonderful little girl character in this and if, there, if you're a young mom out there and looking for a costume for your little girl this book has got a great idea for that as well so be on the lookout for a future video coming soon of the DIY home idea of how you might can make that costume would like to meet Rachel Winters Book number two, Let's Be Weird Together, a book about love by Brooke Barker and Boaz Frankel. Frankel? Not sure. Eh, sorry. It's a new release. It's actually an illustrated book, which is quite refreshing, uh, not for children, but for adults, based upon those weird, quirky, funny things we often find ourselves doing just because we're falling in love. <laughs> and I love that concept. It's really quite entertaining. Um, I received this copy in a digital format because it was a review copy. And I want to give it a second viewing as a hardcover book, which is how it is intended. And because uh, sometimes digital formats don't necessarily work very well for illustrated books where the illustrations go across two pages. Uh, so if you pick this one up, make sure it's in the hardcover format is what I would recommend. And uh, Let's Be Weird Together, a book about love by Brooke Barker and Boaz Frankel. Frankel, help. Book number three is actually book number two of a series I'm reading, uh, the Cork O'Connor series by William Kent Kruger, and this one is entitled Boundary Waters. William Kent Kruger is fastly becoming one of my favorite authors. He wrote This Tender Land, which is I absolutely loved, one of my all-time favorites. And in this series, he is really doing a great job as well. Uh, the he's, the set the series in an environment that's absolutely ripe for storytelling. And uh, you've got the icy tundra, you've got frozen lakes, you've got people disappearing right and left in the wilderness that you need night goggles in to see anything. And it's just loaded with Native American mystical folklore that is weaving in and out of the story and um, really keeping your attention. Um, the thrill factor is definitely holding up between book one and book two in this series, and I'm looking forward to the rest of it. Boundary Waters, book two of the Cork O'Connor series by William Kent Kruger. Book number four is The Family Upstairs by Lisa Jewell, and I've created a new category based upon a book like this, which is faux historical fiction because the storyline is based upon this quote-unquote real event that's happened and you become so invested in this story that you actually do believe this event did happen that you're reading an historical book 
and which this is not at all. And I love it when you become so invested in a story that that happens. Um, also, the character of the house is a primary character in this book, and I love the, when that element is there. Mm, love that. And then finally, the first chapter of a thriller can actually be quite a tough nut to crack for an author, and Lisa Jewell just does it masterfully. She just hooks you right from the start. She gives you just enough details that you know right where you're at when you're jumping into the story, and you never feel like you're playing catch up like that. And so, thank you, Lisa. Great thriller. The Family Upstairs by Lisa Jewell. Book number five is Hill Women by Cassie Chambers, which I absolutely loved. I've already done an entire book chat video on it that you can check out right here. It's a book club favorite and a time favorite. It is a memoir set in the Appalachian culture, which tells the grandmothers to the mothers to the daughter's experience from the experience of the daughter. And it just checks all the boxes of what a memoir should be. It informs you, it inspires you, it surprises you and how this story will relate and resonate to you even if you don't have a connection to the Appalachian culture. And isn't that what reading is all about? Creating that kind of connection between you and someone else? <sighs> yes. <laughs> Pick it up. Hill Women by Cassie Chambers. Also, side note, I'm going to be doing some DIY home ideas inspired by the experience in Hill Women, so be looking for that here on the channel too as well. Book number six, Dear Edward by Anne Napolitano. Fabulous book. New release told in a dual timeline of this one boy's experience. Uh, one timeline is leading up to this cataclysmic event in his life that actually propels him into his second experience, but both timelines are being told simultaneously. Absolutely masterful writing and wonderful character development. I mean, there are so many characters in this book that are multidimensional, totally unique, completely fleshed out and every single one of them adds into the story and makes it resonate even deeper within you. There is nothing wasted in this book. Ah, just wonderful. And uh, there's a great young girl on the rise character in this book. You're going to know her when you see her. Ah, she's wonderful. And uh, it's a book club favorite. It's a time favorite. Dear Edward by Anne Napolitano. Book number seven, Love Her or Lose Her by Tessa Bailey. And here's your spicy folks for the month. <laughs> I tried to think of it as like a jalapeno rating of how spicy it would be. So if you think of Fifty Shades of Grey as being definitely all five jalapenos for that, then uh, Love Her Loser is still definitely pretty spicy. I'd give it like three jalapenos. Still pretty spicy. I mean, my mom and I were talking about this book. I mean, how does the world come to that, that my mom and I are reading the same kind of book? Oh my gosh. But anyway, we were thinking about, you know, really at the core of this story is a woman who's feeling undervalued and underappreciated. And what woman can't relate to that at some point? So you can create a connection between you and this character, even if you choose not necessarily to live out your life like this or whatever, but just Follow her adventure and live through her shoes and then glean from that and bring it into your own life, whatever you want to. No judgment here because folks, in my opinion, if you solve the undervalued question in your life, oh, more power to you. Love her or lose her by Tessa Bailey. Book number eight is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This one came from my backlist. I also have another one of hers on that list, which is Daisy Jones and the Six, which I've not gotten to yet. With this one, uh, it is, I would call it into that faux historical fiction category because you really think you're reading about someone that really lived, even though you're not. It's at the core of the story is this aging Hollywood movie star who's not giving any interviews for years. Think like Greta Garbo, Marlena Dietrich, that kind of thing. And she's now um, agreed to tell her whole story to this young journalist, including all the details of her seven marriages that she's had in her life. It really puts you right in the place of that time. And um, I listened to this one as an audio book, which was absolutely excellent, which used, I think, three different narrators of the different voices in the book. And it really puts you in the time and place. The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. 
Book number nine is The Tenant by Katrine Ingberg. And this is a new release in January and also a new novel, a new debut novel by a new author uh, who was previously a dancer and a choreographer with experience in theater and television, which will not be surprising to you when you read this book because there's actually tons of visual imagery in this book that is very theatrical and really adds to the mystery crime thriller that you're experiencing within this book. Uh, this book actually took me the longest to read, even though it wasn't the longest book. And I think uh, it was just that shift in style that from the book that I had just previously read to this book here. But I stuck with it and I'm really glad I did. Uh, and I understand this is going to be a series and I look forward to the next ones as well. The Tenant by Katrine Ingberg. And book number 10 is Small Space Style by Whitney Lee Morris. And I absolutely love this book. It's a time favorite, in my opinion. It's going to stay on my bedside table for quite some time because it's loaded with ideas of living large in a small space. And that subject is really close to my heart because I lived in a less than 500 square foot apartment in New York for 20 years. And I really have an appreciation for how every inch is valuable real estate. So I'm going to be doing some more uh, posts from this book of bringing some of those ideas to life and DOI home ideas. So stay tuned for those videos. And also, too, let's celebrate that wonderful, strong female character that is the writer of this book, actually, because she is taking something that she believes in and she's built her own blog and business and making a living doing something that she feels passionate about. So bravo, Whitney Lee Morris. Wow. <laughs> Did we do it? 10 minutes? 10 books? I don't know. I think we came pretty close. We'll see. <laughs> There's going to be links below in the description for all the books that I mentioned in today's video, as well as an opportunity to get my free newsletter. So you'll be notified when I have new videos coming up, as well as features and free resources on my website. And don't forget, I also already have an entire book chat video on Heal Women by Cassie Chambers here on my YouTube channel. You can check it out right here, as well as there are going to be links below down in the description where you can find even more features on this book on my website. And if you're curious to see how all of those numbers came together at the beginning when I was setting the scene for these books, I've got a printout, uh, a download that you can get below, another link in my description, so that you can see how all these books fit into those categories. So, what's next? Well, look for my next video, which will be a preview of all of the books that I plan to read in February, including nine new releases that I can't wait to tell you about. So make sure that you've subscribed to my channel and that you tap the bell so that you'll be notified when that video is ready to go. Thanks so much for watching. So whether you're sitting around a pool on a top of a vacation, <laughs> then make sure that you, which side is it? Subscribe to my channel over here. There's also sort of a special place in my heart, which is, I always get mixed up because everything looks backwards on the camera. This is my special place in my heart. <laughs> I know where my special place is, okay? She doesn't give away, she doesn't, what is it? She doesn't sell the farm, but she definitely wants you to milk the cow. Does that make sense? <laughs> Does that make sense? Okay.